you doing? You going to a Halloween party? I haven't been to a party in 30 years. I was in college, 1991. I'm going to talk about something important. Before I do that, I was going to show you this. I know you can't see the rings on it. This is a piece of petrified wood. Most petrified wood, you actually can't see the tree rings. <laughs> you can actually see, wow, countless millions of years ago, that was a rainy season. That was a dry season. You can count the rings, but... I think the last ring was when the tree died endless millions of years ago. Ah, stuff like that is quite fascinating. Um, and also too amber. Uh, especially the fact that you can actually warm it up in your hand and you can actually smell the ancient tree resins from... This is Indonesian amber from roughly 40 million years ago. It's, yeah, it's a sphere, but it's actual amber. You heat it up in your hand and you can actually smell the amber. This is like a $12 ball of amber. I've had this for a really, really long time. It's, that's absolutely fascinating. You could, it smells like a, a spicy, musky pine tree. This is about the most accurate description I could give for it. I wanted to talk about uh, the conjugate geometry of nature. And this has been most, would have been a wonderful thing to learn about in uh, school or college. But once again, for the upteenth millionth time, nothing important has ever been taught in school. I mean, it hasn't, even if it was a private school. It's like, you know, I could tell you about you know, an entire nature of the universe in a matter of about 15 minutes, and everything comes and derives from this. Like Isis and Osiris, light and illumination, the so-called North Pole of a magnet, and the South Pole of a magnet. Yeah, nature of everything. It can actually affect seed growth, and I've done many, many videos on this, and had thousands of people duplicate the experiment where you can actually change the way seed growth occurs. It could be faster and grow better by doing North Pole exposure or South Pole exposure because the actual magnetic field between the North and the South is a proportionality of 1 to 5. North Pole is a proportionality of 1, whereas the South Pole is a proportionality of 5. Same as this apple. Of course, I got this apple upside down, but it depends on what you say if it's upside down or not. This is, of course, where it hung from the tree and got all its sustenance from the tree. We have the South Pole up here, and if we cut it in half, we're, of course, looking at a proportionality of 5 to 1, whereas this section of the apple has a volume of 5, roughly. Not that it's a perfect apple. And the uh, North Pole down here is a proportionality of 1. The principle and attribute. People say all the time, they ask me the questions, like, why are you interested so much in field theory and metaphysics and physics in general, actually? It's like, well, there's no distinction between those three. Absolutely none. You just flip sides of the exact same coin. To completely understand magnetism, and I'm happy to say, even if I drop dead tomorrow, um, for whatever reason, which I hope I don't. Um, still got a lot of stuff to do, but one of the best sayings I've ever heard, and I forget who told it to me, is that life is what happens when you're making plans. And if I drop dead tomorrow, I at least know that I was the first human being to truly understand what magnetism is and how it works. And of course, it's no different than speaking about illumination and its relationship to light. No different than speaking about the meat of this apple in relationship to the seeds that are at the center. And that which, of course, gave this apple sustenance before it uh, fell from the tree or was plucked from the tree. And if we cut it in half here, I think everybody knows what the inside of a freaking apple looks like. You twist it apart. And you can actually uh, do this with a magnet or take two magnets and bring them together and of course, create one magnet, and they'll actually uh, the north the the if the south pole is over here, it'll actually shift immediately over here. So there's no south pole located on this side of a magnet, and a north pole over here because it's not located there. It's forced there. That's Mother Nature's secret: is simplex pressure mediation, and the fundamental conjugate geometry of the entire universe is the magnetic and the dielectric. The three-dimensional geometry of magnetism is the torus. Magnetic toroid, and people will show me all these uh, toroidal uh, coils that they've made, and I've made more than a few of them myself. I hate making them because it's so tedious to make them. And so, what's the significance of torus? We know torus's geometry of magnetism is up to, well, I don't know, it's beautiful. It's Mother Nature's, but well, why is that Mother Nature's geometry? 
Well, the extrapolation of a three-dimensional force vector is a force vector towards the creation of space. And the full extrapolation of a three-dimensional force vector is a torus. So a torus is the full bloom, if you will, the full flower bloom, the flower of life, except it's three-dimensional where a flower only blooms up this way, for example. It's the full three-dimensional bloom of life, the constructive and destructive interference between increasing inertia and acceleration and force and motion, i.e. centrifugal divergence, or that which we call magnetism. So magnetism is the ice relative to its water, right? Ice and water, light and illumination, dielectricity and magnetism. Human beings keep talking to me about electricity in comments, and I do read every comment, and I say, you know, electricity is not a thing itself. Neither is gravity. The phenomena of electricity and gravity are not in question. It's like, what are these things? Can we take them down to simpler components? Charles Proteus Steinmetz said over 100 years ago in his 1917 book that everybody back then in 1917 had no friggin' idea what electricity was, and they had, in his words, overtly complicated it. Because electricity is the thing that we call the consubstantiality of dielectricity and magnetism working together. Same is true of a magnet. You rotate a magnet respective to time, you create a current. And everything, of course, follows the right-hand rule. By the way, here's a little hourglass that's suspended in Lexan. This is a hyperboloid or an hourglass shape. This is the geometry towards counter space. Counter space would be analogous right here at the center of uh, the little hourglass where no time exists. You can't tell time right here. You can only tell time here or here. Yeah. There's no apple to eat at the center here, but there's the potential for apple. You see these little black seeds right there in the middle? And there's also, too, if you pluck the seeds out, you have this little hollow cavity or a nave. Interestingly enough, if you actually take two magnets and put them together, where they make one magnet, which of course they do, you put a little um, a Gauss meter, which they make them super thin, sensor between the two, it'll me measure no magnetic flux. I thought at the center of something, there is the most of what something is, right? You go to the center of something, there's the most of it, right? No, this is why human beings have a fundamental misunderstanding of the conjugate nature of the universe. They also, too, and I, and I know the word counter space is a nonsense word. We could say zero point, we could say the ether, and the ether, of course, is inertia. And, of course, inertia means inert, the original definition of inertia. Pure, unmanifest potential with no Cartesian value. It has no x, y, z coordinate. It has itself no mass or magnitude. Only matter and phenomena have mass and magnitude. So what's the antithesis of mass and magnitude? It would be counter space or zero point or inertia or ether. I don't care what you call it. It'd be no different than the center of this hyperboloid, which is the geometry of increasing inertia and acceleration towards counter space, or the geometry of dielectricity. The negative image of an hourglass shape is this. Even though this is not perfectly a torus, it is a torus. Yeah, the negative image of a torus is a hyperboloid. The negative image of a hyperboloid is a torus. You know there's no time right here at the center of this hourglass? There's that little pinch point. I know the grains of sand pass through that pinch point. You can't take the analogy too far. Well, the center of a magnet, there's no magnetic flux. At the center of this apple, there's all the potential for an apple. Think about that for a second, please. Pause. At the center of this apple, there's all the potential for an apple. We have seeds right here, right? I don't want to do that. I've got to plant them and wait 30 years to get more apples. That's not the point. Yeah, it, that is basically how... I don't know if it takes 30 years. It depends on the apple tree, right? Here at the center, we have these neat little things, these little hollow spots, these little hollow cavities, kind of like the center of the wheel in the ancient metaphysical symbolism of ancient Egypt and India, where I have the potential for millions of apples from that little potential right there. Technically, theoretically, and undeniably so, I can get millions of apples out of the seed. Might take several lifetimes, you know, <laughs> plant that many trees, but I can get it from that. In the center of this apple, there's no apple, but there is the potential for all that which is apple. At the center of the dielectric, where no magnetic flux exists, is the potential for all phenomena. The meat of the apple, of course, would be an analogous to, the spa uh, to this apple would be space. But space is not a thing and it has no properties, so we can't take that analogy too far. But that's what existential beings of mass and magnitude live upon which we live upon uh, the phenomena 
of mass and magnitude, which are spatial. They have a x, y, z coordinate of x mass and x magnitude. And as a being of mass and magnitude, ultimately I'm not a being of mass and magnitude, but this temporal being is, you know, I consume and live off of. Nobody wants to see a fat guy eat, I know. I live upon and eat upon this apple, the fruit of all sheer pure potential. I laugh at people who laugh at me talking about counterspace. I don't care what word you call it. I know counterspace is rather a ridiculous word. Say plane of inertia. Say counterspace. Say inertia. Say the ether. We have all pure potential here. Metaphysically, there's no distinction between this little apple seed and the center of the hyperboloid right here, through which, by which, and from which. In the true hourglass of inertia and magnetism, or dielectricity and magnetism, the sands, if you will, of force and motion vector would be emanating from the center. Rather than having sand over here and over here, or over here versus over here, the sands would actually be emitting from the hyperboloid into the torus and returning back there. From thou whence came, to thence thou shalt go. Ever heard that passage before? This is not only both metaphysically important, it's one of the cornerstones of understanding. Some people only care about money, intercourse, and fast cars, and I don't know, gold jewelry, who knows what. Um, anybody that has any wisdom of all at all, or wants to have wisdom, is interested in the mechanics of the universe. And this is the absolute foundation, the concrete poured foundation to all understanding of absolutely everything in the universe, because everything in the universe does follow it. Absolutely everything. Note to self, never eat on camera again. <laughs> everything in the universe follows that. It's inescapable. It is Mother Nature's foundation. From the top of her dreadlocks down to her muddy feet and her hemp skirt and her hairy pits. and <laughs> We're all fascinated by the sands over here and the lack of sands here that are coming from here to here. We're all fascinated by the apple and how it tastes. This is all physics. This is all phenomena. It's temporal. Like, if I let this apple go, it'll rot and the bugs will eat it and it'll be a pile of nothing. Take these seeds. A metaphysician is not disinterested in matter and phenomena, but they're interested in sheer potential. I'm more interested in this choke point from which magnetism comes. And why does it come at all? Why is there anything at all rather than nothing? Nihil ex nihilo. You can't take that too far. From naught comes naught. And people confuse nothing with not a thing. Like absolutely nothing. You mean both physically and metaphysically? Yeah, nothing. Versus not a thing. Everything comes from not a thing, which is not to be confused with nothing. All apples come from this neat little hollow spot right here in the center where nothing is except for the seed. You actually take the seed and cleave it, which I'm not going to do on camera, obviously, and it has two halves. Between that two halves is, I forget the name of the little part of the seed that sits in the middle of the little stem from which it grows, and the two halves actually come up out of the ground and form the leaves of the sprout. So we can cleave this again and find nothing. Yet, you know, I can get, if given enough time, you know, get a million apple trees and a gazillion apples from this little thing that sits here at the middle of nothing. There's nothing there. You know what? He eats the center of the apple or nothing there. But some little pithy seeds. He spit the seeds out, right, onto the dirt. Given the correct opportunity, they'll sprout. Given the correct climate and water, so on and so forth. Conjugate geometry of the entire universe is force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Mother Nature doesn't use a calculator. She doesn't do uh, differential equations. Everything is force and motion, inertia and acceleration, and everything is simplex pressure mediation. To say everything is capacitance, resistance, permeability and permittivity, magnetic permeability and dielectric permittivity, capacitance, resistance, no different than saying field pressure mediation. These are just fancy little silly words for saying field pressure mediation. Everything in nature says the same thing. Conjugate geometry, the yin and the yang, 
negative image of uh, pure potential, i.e. the hyperboloid, or technically the center of the hyperboloid. The entire hyperboloid itself is the geometry of increasing inertia and acceleration. The center of this hourglass or hyperboloid is inertia itself. Out here is increasing in our, in our true hourglass of Mother Nature. The sands are both emanating from the center and returning to the center, but they follow the circuitous route, which is a torus. Magnetism is the dielectric field. No different than saying ice. Ice in the water. Ice in the water is like saying water in the water. We just have different words for all these little different things which are fundamentally one and the same thing, but different attributes of one and the same thing. Ice, water, steam. It's all water. Dielectricity, magnetism, so-called gravity, so-called electricity, all one and the same thing. Scalar, same thing. No transverse component, refraction and compression. No transverse component. Scalar energy, same thing. This requires wisdom and insight. Mother Nature is not a complicated chick. It's that human beings literally are that stupid. This is the cornerstone of the entire universe. It is 100% undeniable. It's 100% irrefutable. I don't care if you think that's egotistical. I'm being truthful. I'm being truthful to nature. I'm not propping myself up for nature. I'm just saying this is what nature is in her raw, uncut form. You know, muddy feet and dreadlocks. Not that there's Mother Nature is like a hippie chick, but I'm just, I say that humorously. The conjugate geometry, which are inseparable. You could say yin and yang. I don't care. The torus and the hyperboloid. Force and motion, inertia and acceleration. The loss of energy or inertia manifests as force and motion, centrifugal divergence. And the constructive and destructive interference or the fight between these two, and it's not a fight, it's a simplex pressure mediation of one and the exact same thing. Interweaving between both. It was like, why is there a release of anything? When that conjugate geometry is no different than saying the transcendent self versus the existential self. Light and illumination, principle and attribute. The good and what the good is an attribution, i.e. the good. There is the good and what it does and does is an incorrect word. The good, the good and the good. Nobody ever sees light, they see illumination. Everybody is fascinated by the apple and how tasty or sweet it is, but really... Nobody other than the farmer, because the farmer appreciates that little empty spot in the middle where he finds the seeds. Most farmers don't actually plant from seeds. They actually plant from sprouts. Somebody else does the sprouting. And they get the little saplings, and they play, ah, it's going to be great. I'm going to have a whole lot more apple trees. The farmer cares about the seed. Everybody, all the rest of us only care about the apple. The phenomena, the magnetism. People are fascinated by magnetism, especially from the fact that the field is ab extra. To the magnets. Fascinating. There's something out here. We don't know what it is. Well, it's the disturbance of the ether itself, which is inertia by definition. But we call it magnetism because it is this toroidal field of influence around the hyperboloid of increasing inertia and acceleration, i.e. the dielectric. Magnetism is the dielectric field. You have to drill that into your brain because you don't understand that. You can't understand anything. Illumination is the field of light. There's no difference than saying magnetism is the dielectric field. It's the conjugate geometry of the entire universe, force of motion, inertia, and acceleration. The extrinsic attribute of light is illumination. The extrinsic attribute of the one, the agathon, the absolute, is good. There's the good and what the good is in principle, which we know it by, not objectively, which is the good. The same is true of magnetism. Magnetism is illumination. Magnetism, not literally, talking about analogously. Magnetism is illumination. Magnetism is that good which we recognize as wonderful. Not the transcendent good and certainly not the light. Nobody sees light. They only see illumination. Think about that for a second. This hollow spot in the center would be, of course, light. But we don't see that. We see the apple and the fruit and... It's mass and magnitude and it's juicy, sweet, yummy interior which feeds us and makes us happy. We make apple pies and apple fritters and applesauce and apple cider. <laughs> this is the cornerstone foundation of the entire universe and of Mother Nature. If you like this video, let me know. You can always contact me in the description below. 
Any donations always warmly welcome. This is what every child should learn, but this is also, too, what no adult on earth knows either. And that is sad. Makes me sad to think about it. That is sad. It's like not only do the kids not know it, which I get, but the adults don't know it either. Lux Veritas, thanks so much for watching. Have a lovely week. Goodbye. Yum!